YouTube, it's Marcy Lovely and I'm back with another video and today I'm coming to you guys with another story time. This story time is going to be about the time I got into the worst car accident of my life. Here on my channel, we talk about the good, the bad, the pretty, and the not so cute and this is a not so cute time. I don't like to talk about this too often, so we're going to talk about this. We're going to look at this picture one good time, and we're going to move on from it. So let's go ahead and get started. So this was a couple of years ago. This was the summer between me transitioning either from freshman to sophomore or sophomore to junior. I'm not sure exactly which one, but I do know that it was the summertime between semesters. One particular morning, me and my cousin decided we were gonna go to Six Flags and we had two other girls with us that we pretty much spent the whole summer with as well. So. They were going to get us in for free because it was like a bring a friend free thing or something like that. I just know I didn't have a season pass at the time and I'm pretty sure they did and that's how we were going to get in free. So we were like super excited. Me and my cousin loved Six Flags. Normally I was always the scary one that didn't want to get on rides. But the time before this was like my first time riding roller coasters. I had the time of my life. So I was super excited to get on another roller coaster. And we were just like really excited to go to Six Flags. So we got super cute because you never know. We might see some daddies while we walking around or standing in line. You just never know. So I had on one of my favorite shirts. I'm not sure exactly what it said, but it was a black shirt. It had white letters really big on the shirt. I had on these super cute jeans that fit me just right. I had on some black and white J's that matched my shirt perfectly with a white belt. Y'all know your, your outfit wasn't popping unless you had the belt to match. And I had the belt to match. And my hair, I had a really high pony. I used to love my high ponies. That would be like perfectly centered and perfectly high. I was cute, y'all. So, I was like super feeling myself on this day. Ready to go to Six Flags and get on some good rides. Have a good time with my cousin and our friends. So we're ready to go, we get in the car, we're driving, and there was like a really bad storm the night before. It wasn't storming on this day, but the night before it stormed really bad to where this huge tree, the biggest tree on earth, decided to fall and block the entry to go out of my cousin's apartment complex. Now, it was only one entrance and one exit. It was like the same. And the tree was like blocking it so nobody can get out, nobody can get in. So, and for some reason, I feel like we were like the first car that was going out. And it was like, what the heck happened? So, we were in front of the tree. Cars were beginning to pile up behind us like it's like traffic because you know people want to get out people got places to be people got things to do and we were one of them we need to go to Six Flags so other cars were on the other side of the tree trying to get in because it was like blocking to where nobody can get in nobody can get out so this was like the biggest sign to take y'all butts back home and go sit down somewhere and be safe but no, of course we don't listen. Nothing is stopping us from getting to Six Flags on this day. So we like gathered all these people to help us push this tree out of the way. This tree was so big, y'all. Like I literally, I, you never realize how big a tree is until it's laying on its back, blocking the entrance and the exit for us to get out to go to Six Flags. We helped push this tree and it took like, I think it took like 30 to 45 minutes. It seemed like a really long time. Maybe I was just anxious. 
I'm pretty sure I'm not exaggerating. But it took a long time for us to get that tree out of the way. But we did it. They finally was pushing it little by little. People was helping. Everybody was helping. I mean, I was just pretty much there for more support. But I was like super cheering them on because we really need this tree to get out of our way. So after what seemed like forever, we finally got the tree out of our way. And we are out. Pulling out the apartment complex. We blasting our music. We super feeling ourselves because we still cute. My hair was like blowing in the wind and I had my lip gloss in hand. I remember my lip gloss, if nothing else. I remember having my lip gloss. So, we're going on our way to Six Flags. We are dancing. I'm not sure exactly what songs we were playing, but I know we were super into Rihanna and, um, that Beyonce Cater to You song was out at the time. Was it? No, 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 no. It wasn't Cater to You. Dance for You. Whatever that Beyonce song is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That song was popping at the time. So I'm pretty sure at some point we were listening. So we're about, we're getting ready to turn onto the highway. Every time I pass this place, y'all, I still look at it. Especially when I'm going to Six Flags. I, a little bit nervous but we were getting ready to turn on the highway I remember looking up I was not the driver by the way I was the passenger I was in the front seat my cousin was the driver so I remember looking up the light turned from green to yellow so we're like turning on the highway you know how like we're making a left turn so we're like in the middle like waiting for those cars to go and then we're like in the middle so once the light turned from green to yellow the other cars were beginning to stop so we were turning what happened was the one of the cars because it was turning from green to yellow the guy like sped up super fast and that's how we hit so my last thing I seen the light from green to yellow. I was in the mirror putting on my lip gloss because after wasting all that time with that tree, my lips wasn't like, you know, sticky no more. So I was putting on my lip gloss after I seen the light turn. That was the very last thing I seen. I didn't even see it turn to red. That was just the last thing I saw. So, of course, I didn't know what happened. It was like I woke up to the situation because it knocked me unconscious. So, one of my friends always told me that the driver never dies. It's always the passenger. And it's so crazy because I... I didn't know what happened but I guess I did because I remember opening my eyes very slowly and I didn't understand what happened and I seen the guy his car was still in our car so like I could have reached out and touched this guy this is how close he was and he backed his car out which you are not supposed to do. I took my permit test. I know you are not supposed to do that. You're supposed to keep everything the same, at least in the state of Georgia. But he backed his car out. I watched him be so close to us. I watched him back out. And then it was like smoke everywhere. So I don't even remember seeing the airbag. But the airbag had to be out. So... I'm like just looking around, not even moving my head, just opening my eyes, looking around. And I remember my head thinking, no, I'm the passenger. I'm still alive. He wrong. I ain't died. And then it hit me. If I'm the passenger and I'm still alive. The driver must be dead, which is my cousin. So I was like, ah! and I screamed her name. And... I, I don't know what she was doing at the time, but she wasn't dead, y'all. But I don't know what she was doing at the time, but at the same time, like, she was just like, 
and she seen all the smoke, she thought that the car was about to catch on fire. So she was like, oh my God, get out the car, get out the car. So she opened her door. I'm trying to open my door to hurry up and get out the car, and it wouldn't open. Which now I know is because he was basically in my door. But it wouldn't open and I couldn't get out. So I remember saying, I can't get out. The door won't open. The door won't open. So she was like, climb out the window. Thank God my window was down and it was summertime because all that glass would have been in my face. And I'm so happy it wasn't. But one of the girls in the back seat said, oh my God, Marcia, your face. What the hell is wrong with my face? What do you mean my face? I couldn't see anything. And I remember that we had like some steering wheel fluid or something like that in the back seat and it exploded and got in one of the girl's eyes. So like her eyes were like really black and like they had to rinse it out with water once the paramedics and the ambulance came or whatever. But I climbed out the window and the guy didn't even get out the car. Like how rude of him. You already moved your car out of our car which you were not supposed to do that. And then he sat there and he seen my face before I even seen my face. And I seen my face leaking with blood and I didn't know what happened. I didn't understand. And I don't know why I couldn't find a mirror at the time, but I just remember seeing my face leaking. Everybody kept saying, oh my God, your face. So I began to cry. And I remember as a tear rolling down my eyes, every time a tear would roll down, it would start burning. Because of the burning, I would cry even more. So it was like more tears, more burning. So this guy who I guess watched the whole thing happen, he was like a, a witness to the whole thing. And he came over and he was telling me that I shouldn't have climbed out the window. And I was like, okay, well, you think I'm just going to sit in the car? So he was saying, you have to be still. Like, you have to sit down. So I'm getting the biggest attitude with him when he was really just trying to help i wish i could find this guy because he really was trying to help and he told the police exactly what happened and he was on our side but um he basically was telling me to sit on sit down on the curb and i'm like what is sitting down gonna do my face is leaking blood what is sitting down with is that gonna stop the blood is that gonna stop this burning is that gonna stop me crying like what is wrong with you like that's what i'm telling the guy such a b-word to him i don't know why sorry sorry do you ever watch this video i'm sorry but um basically i don't even know who called the ambulance but the ambulance came let me make sure i didn't miss anything hold on so the ambulance came and they were like oh it's just some abrasions that you had Get this, y'all. What messed my face up was the airbag. Kind of messes that. Like, I had cuts all over, like, up in here and on my neck from the seatbelt. And then the airbag is what cut my face and made my face blow up. And my lip was bigger than my nose. These are the things that's supposed to protect us. And everybody kept telling me it protected me from dying, but look at my face so they kept saying it's just some abrasions they were pouring like water or something on my face they was like like making it like oh you're fine that was irritating me because no I'm not fine my face is blown up but still at this point I had not seen my face so I remember turning around they had my cousin laying on the ground and everybody was pretty messed up but nobody had like physical damage but me so I was like pretty upset about that so I they were telling me like they were gonna make me go on the ambulance at first I wasn't gonna go but my cousin's grandma called and was like she better get in that ambulance so I got in the ambulance but I remember telling them like first can I get a mirror so I looked in like the rear view mirror the side view mirrors of the ambulance and I cried so hard my face looked so bad like look at my lip like I'm just messed up so I got they took me in the ambulance they strapped me down on the bed I rode in the ambulance 
which was actually pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. I always wanted to ride an ambulance, I just didn't want anything bad to happen to me. So, opportunity, when opportunity knocks. So, I rode in the ambulance and they pushed me on the little bed in the ambulance. They gave me a CAT scan because they were thinking that something was going to be wrong with my head or something like that. I don't really know all those medical terms, but I remember being on this machine. It had me in the air and it was like moving me in and out, which was also pretty fun. They pushed me around in the, in the wheelchair, which was another thing I wanted to do. But again, I just didn't want anything bad to happen to me. But since it did, I got my opportunities. So they were pushing me around and I just remember the whole time I was looking for my cousin because nobody rode in the ambulance with me. I was there by myself. And the last I seen they had my cousin laying on the ground and I don't know what happened to those girls. So I just was looking for my cousin like is she here? Did they bring her too? Did she go in the ambulance? Like I didn't know. I didn't know anything. So they finally pushed put me in a room where I was just sitting there waiting. I didn't know where my phone was. I didn't know anything. But like I was in there for like five minutes and then my cousin came running in the room. Apparently they were pushing her around the hospital too and she was looking for me too. And then she finally happened to see me and she dashed out of her room and ran into my room. So I don't know who called my sister, no, 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 I don't know who called my mom, but my mom called my sister and was saying, oh my God, Marcia got into an accident, she got into an accident, you gotta go there. My sister was all the way at my college, but she called up our friend Frank and she told him, Marcia got into an accident without any questions, he got up, told her, let's go, and then he drove her all the way to the hospital that I was at. So when my cousin came in the room, she was telling me that every time she spoke with my mom, my mom was telling her that she had a bad dream about us getting into an accident, but we fell off, we flipped over the bridge. Crazy thing is that we actually were at the little bridge on the highway, but we went to, into the side of the bridge, which she did because of the dream. But we were really close to the actual part where we could have flipped over. But I had never heard about this dream because she didn't want to speak it into existence or something like that. But um, that was like really crazy. So my aunt came, my cousin's grandma, who's my aunt, she came and her and the doctors were getting so upset with me because they kept saying like you're so lucky to be alive right now and I'm like forget that look at my face like I have to walk around with my face like this so they felt like I was so ungrateful but I still stand by this like you can't tell me that I'm being ungrateful or I should feel like this when you're not in my situation you're not walking around with a effed up face like I am so I was just real irritated with them at the time. But um, once my sister got there, she was like consoling me and stuff like that. And then they we could only have one visitor at a time. So they had to like pretty much take turns. Like my aunt will be in there and then she'll go out and my sister will come in. And then she would go out and she was going to let our friend Frank come in to talk to us. And I was really nervous about anybody seeing my face. But as soon as he got in there, he was like, girl, you still look good. Which I know I didn't, but shout out to Frank because he really made me feel a whole lot better. So my aunt was like getting upset because my cousin was giving her so much attitude. I don't know why they were going at it or whatever, but they were so she apparently was in there telling my sister like about my cousin and her attitude and how she's making her mad and we were in there talking to Frank and then my sister just ran in there ran in our room and she was saying like my aunt is just talking her head off she just couldn't take it anymore so like a couple minutes later my aunt coming in there, like what happened to you and <laughs> she was so upset 
that between my cousin, her attitude, and my sister just running while she talking when she looked away, she was just like, forget y'all. And she left, so uh, she going to finish cooking her greens. So we just, I don't even know how we got back. I guess Frank took us. Yeah, 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 Frank took us. And um, the hospital, we weren't in there for a long time, but my sister just cooked us dinner and stuff before she went back to school because she was in summer school, I believe. So, my face was just messed up. I walked around with a mask forever. Like, until my face went down, I was walking around with this mask. And everybody is real lucky that my face healed very quickly because had school started and my face was looking like it was, I was not going. Like, we was going to either do some online classes or I'm just going to be a dropout because I don't care what nobody say. I was not showing my face, okay? But my face healed very quickly. I did. I put aloe vera on it every day, like the actual aloe vera plant, like taking one of the leaves and putting it on my face. This was like the second time I messed up my face. The first time was when the story that we told in my first sister tag with my sister, and it was the same thing. We put aloe vera on my face. This time was, of course, a lot more traumatic and um, work way worse than the first time, but aloe vera definitely work guys so pretty much my cousin kept apologizing like it was her fault or something at first like she just felt really bad because she was a driver and I understand like being the driver and having having something happen like that like I'm pretty sure I would have felt guilty as well at fault or no fault like just being a driver you know so, but I was, it was nothing or nothing, like I wasn't mad at her, or even if it had been her fault, I wasn't mad at her, like things like that happened. I was just mad at the situation, and I was mad that my face was messed up and everybody else looked fine. I was really mad about that, I was really bitter. That's pretty selfish of me, but I was, that's just how I felt. We, we had to go to a chiropractor, I had back problems forever like I literally stopped having back problems the end of last year like it was really bad and then I wasn't hoping it like with me having back problems that I had I fell down a flight of stairs at school so that didn't help like it just stuff was just happening to me I don't know what was going on but I just had really bad back problems I would have to take the same pills as my grandmother who's 72 years old 71, 72, she's 71. My 71 year old grandmother, I would take the same pills as her, but thank God it finally stopped because everybody thought that I was gonna have back problems for like a really long time, which that was a long time, but I thought I was gonna have it till like when I get old. Like how I'm gonna push out a baby when I got back problems already now. But um, thank God that stopped. Um, the chiropractor I hated going to because it would hurt so bad. Still, I can't get massages because like the top of my neck is like very, very sensitive. And because my tailbone was shifted, like if any, it doesn't bother me until someone touches it. So if anybody's trying to give me like a massage, those two places, like just stay away from it. I don't even get massages because of it, but it just hurts really bad bad and although my face healed very fast and quickly we didn't know it at the time like I walked around literally with a mask covering like all of this like only my eyes and my nose you will see because I covered all this and then when it went down a little bit my lip then my lip was regular then I would just cover this side but um my lawyer even asked me had I considered plastic surgery I wasn't doing a plastic surgery. I don't even know, like, let's say it didn't heal as good as it did. I, I don't even know what I would have done, but I was offended that he asked me that. But, I mean, I can see why now, thinking back on it. But still, like, my face was healing really good. What do you mean, some plastic surgery? A lot of people don't even know that I got into a car accident till I tell them. But there is a mark on my face still that... I can still see everybody act like they can't see it but every time I apply makeup or anything like I can still see it on my face and 
Because of the situation, I didn't drive for a really, really long time. So now I do drive every day, but I would not drive on the highway. Like things like that just make me um, feel anxious and it's just a lot going on. I just feel like everybody's moving just way too fast for me. I'm nervous about shifting lanes on the highway, but it's bad because on the street, I like to drive fast and I gotta look out for the for the cops but fast on the street is different from fast on the highway on the highway I'm not driving fast at all everybody's passing me I just don't I just don't like it I just don't do it at all but um, maybe one day it won't have that effect on me either at first when I first got into the accident any loud horn or screeching sound will make me jump so hard it happened again just the other day but it barely ever happens like now I'm blowing my horn like I'm, I guess I'm used to it but I never thought that I would even get over that like I didn't think I would drive at all and now I do drive things like that don't affect me the only last effect that I have is I don't drive on the highway and maybe that'll come to an end. It's just not something that I'm even pressed to do. Like, I'm just okay with driving on the street. I drive to work an hour away on the street, y'all. I don't care, like. What? Oh my God. But anyway, pretty much, that's my story as to when I got into a car accident. I showed the picture of my face. I'm so happy I don't look like that anymore and I'm so happy I look like this. It made me rem remember taking pictures, being able to take pictures. Like Once that happened, I just remember, oh my God, I can't wait to be able to walk around and show my face again. I can't, be, I can't wait to take pictures on Instagram. And I remember the very first picture I posted um, after the accident. I'm going to insert that too. But I posted this picture on Instagram and it was everybody's favorite picture. But it meant so much to me because it was my first picture showing my face and revealing my face after the accident. I can see the lines of the accident in this picture but I was just okay with it enough to show and um, I'm not sure if people can see it let me know in the comments can you see the lines can you see it in any videos and can you see it in this picture but I, if you guys like story times like this make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed to my channel be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button smack it right in the face and don't let it happen again for me watching another video without being subscribed. Like, come on. And let me know in the comments down below if you can see the lines in my face. Can you see it in this picture? Can you see it regularly? Have you been in a car accident? Tell me about that. Make me feel better about this because this is literally the last time we're talking about this. Y'all got my secret now. Y'all know what happened. And no, I never got the plastic surgery in case you're wondering. My face just healed due to aloe vera. So if you ever mess up anything like your face or anything like that, know from me, aloe vera does work. And I'm so happy that you guys support me so much. I appreciate